Hi, I'm Lynn for Track Family. Hope you're doing fine today. Many of you asked about our 12 volt installation and we were waiting to definitely finish our setup. And uh, as now we finally added our solar panel to our 12 volt setup. Our installation is now complete. So let's see that together in this video. And before getting into our 12 volt installation, here are some general and useful information. First, you have to define your power needs. People who only want to power a fridge and a few LED lights won't need a 12 volts overkill installation like ours. Before, we simply had a double battery system with an IBS or TMAX type dual battery management system, which is more than enough to power a fridge and some LED lights during the bivouac and be able to restart the next morning. Now that we are making videos, our needs have increased. We have to charge more electronic devices such as cameras, computers, lights or drones, batteries when we go out and because of that we need more autonomy. The second most important thing when starting a 12 volts installation is to make a good diagram and choose the correct cable sizes based on the length you want. If you know from the start that you will never need a bigger installation and that your power needs won't increase, you can settle for a minimal setup. On the other hand, if you know that in the future your power needs are likely to increase, we recommend you that you already choose larger size of cables. This will have the advantage of not having to redo everything when your needs increase. To deal with the lack of space in the battery compartment of the Defender, we relocated the auxiliary battery to the rear, behind the back seats, to have the possibility to choose a higher capacity battery. The battery space under the driver's seat allows two batteries to settle there, but only small in size. As the distance between the main and auxiliary battery is longer than if they are next to each other, we connected both batteries with 35 square millimeters cables. To try to keep it neat and tidy, we ran every cable through protective sheets under the chassis to have fewer cables dragging through the cabin. For the accessories on the roof rack, we brought the cables up from under the chassis via the right wing and fixed the cables along the snorkel so that there was none of them between the door seals. This requires drilling through the body of the Defender and under the rear wheel arches, but once everything is properly insulated, you really have good setup that will last over time. Don't forget to install the right fuses for each accessory in order to protect your installation. This can prevent a shortcut which can be very dangerous if the cables start to heat up and then burn. This can light on fire your vehicle. So the fuses the closer to the battery the better. When we installed our new Victron auxiliary battery at the rear of the vehicle we were able to reuse our old 55 amps hour Optima battery and mounted next to the starter battery we already had here, which now gives us 110 amps hour starter battery. This is really comfortable in winter when temperatures are negative or when wintering, for example. We chose to link our two small 55 amps hour batteries rather than changing for a larger one, because if there's a problem with the main battery, the whole vehicle can be paralyzed. With two starter batteries, if one breaks down, we're still able to remove manually the link and use only the working battery to start our engine. This idea was given by a friend who did this type of setup on his four wheels drive and we thought it was a great idea. As auxiliary battery, we now have a 170 amps hour AGM supercycle battery from Victron. It's a huge battery in both size and capacity. This was the maximum size we could fit in our dedicated space at the rear of the vehicle. 
We chose an AGM type because it has excellent specification. It allows many deep discharge cycles, which is perfect for our use. Its only drawback is its weight of 55 kilograms. Our IBS dual battery management system automatically links the main and auxiliary batteries to recharge them and then isolates the auxiliary battery when the vehicle is stopped. This is to protect the starter battery from discharging. This was the first installation we did years ago on our vehicle. Today it's kind of obsolete because this function is provided by our Redark BCDC1240D, a DC to DC charger. We keep our IBS because if one system fails, we can still use the other one to keep us going. It isn't the only reason and we will explain this in the other video. Now the weather is a bit better, it's not raining anymore, so I'm gonna have a nice walk in the woods. As a DC to DC charger, we chose the Red Arc BCDC 1240D. This device is 100% waterproof and it's possible to fix it wherever you want inside the cabin or even in the engine bay. It isn't afraid of harsh conditions. It manages the charge of the auxiliary battery up to its maximum, which will rarely be the case with a conventional dual battery setup. It's a very complete device and it can be installed on all types of vehicles and does support new smart alternators. There are several types of chargers and you will have to choose yours according to your battery setup. The big advantage of this charger is that it's also an MPPT solar converter. It manages solar power input even when the alternator is running. Plus it will always favor solar power which is good to relieve a little bit the alternator. Our IBS dual battery management system allows to monitor the main and auxiliary batteries by giving it the voltage of each battery. This is better than nothing, but this information is incomplete. We won't know the real status of charge and the remaining capacity of each battery. For this, we now have the Victron battery monitor BMV712 Smart. This small accessory is a real revolution for us. It allows us to know in real time not only the exact voltage of each battery, but also many other information about the auxiliary battery. You can read this information directly on the monitor, but also on your smartphone via an application and the Bluetooth connection. This is really handy when you are outside of the vehicle or in the rooftop tent, for example. This monitor must be connected to a shunt to which is connected all the grounds of every accessory connected to the auxiliary battery. This is why if you have done a good and well thought installation from the start, adding this monitor will be easy. To not have many connections directly to the battery, which can create a general disorder, we installed bus bars with stud terminals and fuse boxes. This is also to keep the cables tidy and be able to repair easily in case of an accessory failure. We therefore have two boxes for small accessories below 25 amps. One is only used for accessories that can work both when ignition is off or on. The other box is split into two parts. One half of the board works only when ignition is on and the other half when ignition is off. The other more demanding accessories, such as the compressor, are connected directly to the bus bars with larger fuses. These boxes also make it possible to centralize the ground of the accessories, so we have less risk of ground problems due to corrosion of parts exposed to moisture. The accessories are all connected to carling type switches and are centrally located on the QB box and on the roof console. The winch is the only accessory that is connected to the main battery. Because of the great power of this accessory, it's preferable to always winch with the engine running. We installed a large 600 amps mega fuse and a winch circuit breaker to prevent problems in case of a shortcut. To recharge our electronic devices that aren't rechargeable via USB, such as computers or joint batteries, 
We use a 12 volt, 220 volt inverter of 550 watts from Waco. Today we don't need a more powerful inverter because of the devices we use. Whenever possible, we go for 12 volt because inverters need a lot of power to work. Nowadays, many devices are rechargeable via USB and this is very convenient with a 12 volt system. Unless you want to use a coffee machine or a hair dryer, a 500 watts inverter should be enough and will likely take less space in your four-wheel drive camper than a 2000 watts inverter. The solar panel is the last part of our installation. Our entire 12 volt system was already ready to receive solar power thanks to the Redac BCDC 1240D. We fixed a 115 watts Victron solar panel. We did hesitate between a fixed installation and a solar blanket and in the end we chose a fixed installation because it doesn't take up any space in the cabin and the panel works constantly as long as there is light available. Because of the large capacity of our auxiliary battery, the solar panel will mainly be there to provide power when we stop for more than a day or when the distance driven between two stops isn't long enough and doesn't allow the auxiliary battery to be fully recharged. We noticed on the monitor that the efficiency of the solar setup is very good and the auxiliary battery is always 100% charged. We fixed our solar panel on the rooftop tent as this space is almost the same dimensions as our 115 watts panel. We brought the cables out through the small rear window and used 10 square millimeters cables in a protective sleeve. The only negative point with this configuration on a moving part is that it's necessary to have an additional length of cable to allow the tent to be opened. And when the tent is closed, like here, it's necessary to fix this excess of cable properly, but we think it isn't too dramatic. I stopped the car for the end of this video because I know it's kind of noisy when I'm talking to you and driving at the same time. I wanted to let you know that we will get deeper in the details for every accessory or connection made. We will do a small series of videos, so one part, one video. So please do stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if it's not done yet. Also turn on the notification bell. If you like this video, please add a thumbs up and share it with a friend. And also maybe you should join us on Facebook. We created a new Facebook group. I'll add the link in the description below. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye.